Well, thank you for letting me be here this morning. And Doug does not know what this means. Let me tell you what this means. The little imp, Geneva Collins, who is sitting by Doug, she was one of the students in our practitioner class. There were four of us, Geneva, Doug, and I, and Donna Walton. And at that time, we, the center didn't have any practitioners, so we were the first ones. And the minister didn't have any experience using practitioners, but she thought, well, you know what? I think it'd be a good idea for the practitioners to each take a Sunday in January and talk about the first four chapters. So you keep that in mind, Bonnie. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did it for a couple of years, and Geneva reminded me on Tuesday that part of what we always said every year in one of the chapters was, the law always works no matter what. You combine blue and yellow, and you always get green. So she shows up this morning with this to remind me of that and to remind me to lighten up. And I see someone else in the, um, here today that may remember that time when we struggled to do those talks back in the 90s. So thank you, Geneva, for giving me a little fun to start with. Well, as Bonnie said, and as you all know, the theme this month has been rooting, rebooting our idea of God and the software that is our belief systems, our experiences, and our relationships. So first, I'd like to tell you what I was feeling when I arrived at the center back in the 80s. I had been raised and confirmed in a traditional religion whose idea of God was an external being that was just waiting to punish you and to set you straight if you did something wrong. And so we were taught to kind of sort of live in fear of straying. And as soon as I left home, I abandoned that um, religion. Didn't find the center until 20 years later. And I loved coming in here because Ernest Holmes gave me choices of what to call God so that I didn't have to struggle anymore. I could call God ultimate stuff. I really liked that. It kind of personalized it. It kind of made it a person, made it safe. Ultimate stuff, spirit, creative mind, first cause, law, life, energy. So it was easy for me to start out that way, and eventually God became a real comfortable word and concept for me. So I really appreciated that about um, religious science. And before I came here, all I knew was that my life was all right. My life was okay. I was comfortable. I was working, had a job, had a husband. It was good. Had a, had a son. But then I, later on I realized that one of the old beliefs, and I heard one of the speakers mention it, was that I was brought up saying that you always have to work hard. Work really hard. And, and I never got that there was anything about you could enjoy your job, you could have fun in your job, just that you had to work hard all your life. So that was one of the beliefs that I discovered for me to work on when I came into this philosophy. So I appreciated what Reverend Bonnie said about changing your idea of God and that it's okay to do that. There, we don't have to be rigid. We can take in new information. We can look at our experiences and we can revision the God that works for us and for the world around us. And it's okay. And that you can continue to do it. There's nothing that says what you believe now has to remain in stone forever. You can always evolve and change and take in new information. All of the speakers reminded us that the law works for everyone all the time and that the universe has no favorites. But it is our interpretation where we think maybe the universe, God, spirit is picking on us but it's just our interpretation going through the filter of our belief system. So one thing that I learned to do too was if I was feeling negative or I thought someone was against me or there was an experience that didn't feel good for me and it came to my awareness, I realized I had the choice to either just ignore it and keep on going or I could take a moment to say, hmm, 
isn't that interesting? I wonder why I'm reacting to that. Is there something here that I need to heal? And I could either work on it then or make a note and take it into meditation. So we're always evolving. We always have the opportunity to change, change our life. We can revision our experiences. We can change negative thoughts to positive. Peggy again reminded us that the law is impersonal. It's always working. So she likes to talk to us in short phrases that are easy to uh, have a mantra about. One of them, she said, it's what we think about, we bring about. Is that true in your life? Yeah. So part of this philosophy for me, these first four chapters, gives me the option to rethink all of this stuff and to focus on what I want instead of blaming and calling wrong something that may not be working in my life. She is a perfect example of that good is always available to us and that we can have as much of it as we are able to take into our life. So once again, you can look at your belief and say, oh, I don't deserve that, or if I have that, somebody else doesn't have that. Or you could say, I'm open. I'm ready to receive. God supports me, loves me. My abundance helps everyone. It's our choice. So it only works for us as we allow it to work through us. So I'm going to ask you a couple of times, how much good do you really allow in your life? You might want to take that into meditation. The laws of nature are universal. And as we are universal, individualized centers of expression, our use of the law is personal and expresses individually through us as our life. Some more bumper sticker reminders she gave us are believe, perceive, and receive. What you believe you're going to see out picturing in your life and what you're going to create in your life. So if you don't like what you're receiving, you have a choice. You can go on and complain about it, or you can say, what do I believe about that? Why is that showing up? What do I need to do? She also reminded us that we can trace it, face it, erase it, and replace it. It's the same thing. Something comes up, take a look at it, see what it's telling you, face it head on, see what it makes you feel about it, and let it go if it doesn't serve you. Now, sometimes we're taught that we're supposed to stuff our feelings, and that really does not resonate with me. In classes, I would fight against that, and I said, you know, when I'm angry, by gosh, I want to feel angry. I want to feel it, sit with it, understand it, and then when I'm ready to let it go, I can let it go. But I don't just want to go, I'm angry, but I'm not supposed to be. Just clean it up and neutralize it. Powerful stuff. And she, of course, the simplest of all, unlearn to relearn. Again, same thing. Look at your beliefs, look at what you're thinking, look at what you're saying, and see if you need to change that. One of my and Doug's most heartwarming experiences in going through this philosophy is when we teach class. And there's, in every class, there's, there's a moment when one or more participants has that aha moment, or we have an aha moment. And it's, it's like the light comes on in the eyes as they get that they're really powerful beings, that they're in charge, that they can take control of their lives, that they don't have to say, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I'm sick. You can take control. You can feel the power within you and know that spirit is here to support you. Move from being a victim of circumstances to a powerful being in charge of their lives. Randy, of course, said we're always creating. We know that. We're always using the law of mind. Sometimes we might not know it, and that's what we need to look at. The unconscious way that we're letting spirit work through us. 
through our beliefs again and our actions and the words we say. So what image are you holding in your life, in your mind? What beliefs do you have? If you don't know, look at your life. What's out picturing? Work with a minister or a practitioner or go to class and uncover this stuff to see what's really going on. So as we have seen the light go on during classwork, we have seen, it's just marvelous. I can't talk about classwork too much. We have seen participants who, in the course of the classwork, the ones that really take it seriously and go deep and deep within, they uncover the desires of their heart. They uncover the gifts and the talents that they have that they've forgotten about. And the classwork and their commitment to it and their belief in spirit helps them bring that forward and reframe their life. It makes a huge difference. It's the power of classwork. It's the power to make changes personally and to grow. I know that when I came to religious science, I, Doug wouldn't like me now if I were the same way. I was a real, I was a pretty, pretty well versed in sarcasm. I could just do wonderful zingers because that's the way I kept people away from me, kept people away from knowing who I was. I didn't want to connect on personal levels. I didn't want to be vulnerable because of my past relationship experiences. And I had also, I was also active in the community. I had a marketing position and I needed to interact with lots of different groups of people. So I would go to a lot of parties and functions. And I was becoming a master at being like a chameleon with whoever I was talking to. I, I had this innate sense of who I needed to be to get my end result. So it was really becoming hard on my soul. I didn't know it until I started classes. I could get rid of all that. The who I was, the authentic self that I am, was okay. People either liked it or they didn't like it. And if they didn't like it, so what? I didn't give them power in my life. So this philosophy is just awesome. And it is really simple. It's really simple. But I also, um, I resonated with something that Bram said. He said when he first found New Thought, situations would come up and he thought that, he thought automatically he had to fix it. And I was kind of that way. And then I realized and asked myself, how powerful do I really think I am? That I have to fix everything that shows up in my experience. So I became better at evaluating situations at looking at them, at seeing what I could do. And one teacher I had helped me tremendously, and it was very simple. He said, Tina, you just love it, bless it, and let it be. Take it into meditation. Love it, bless it, and let it be. It's not up to me to make someone change their behavior because I think they should. Every Every soul has its own path, and how do I know what that path is? So the best me I can be is just to let people be, to see them in their highest, to see them in their glory, to see them in their power, no matter what shows up. When we got to practitioner class, and Geneva, Doug, and I talk about this sometimes too, the classes are so powerful, the philosophy is so powerful that if you really want to clean up your life you, and you take it seriously and do the work, sometimes it was so painful to look at myself, to look at the way I was expressing in the world, the way I was showing up. It was painful, uncomfortable, and I didn't like sometimes what I saw. So. You know, sometimes I really said, you know, I think I'm sick. I don't think I, I, don't think I need to go to class tonight because uh, I don't feel well. So the classes give to you what you put into them. They're just wonderful. And it's a safe, comfortable space with people that love you and support you and that honor the privacy. So I ask you again. 
How much good are you allowing in your life? Are you happy? Do you want more? Do you think you can do something about it? I think you can. We also learned um, Ernest Holmes was fond of letting us know that our life is a laboratory, which is another way of saying, if you don't know what you're believing or thinking, look at your life. Just look at your life and what's showing up. It's fun. And especially with a group of people to help you um, really evaluate. I'm fortunate because I live with another practitioner who most of the time I give him permission to call me on my stuff. <laughs> However, sometimes I don't like it when he calls me on my stuff. But it's how we've been able to get where we are. How we've weathered the storms that we've had in our lives. We see each other through our foibles as whole, perfect, and complete. And you can get that with a prayer partner. You can get that with someone in your class. So he doesn't let me complain or whine very, very long about stuff. <laughs> he suggests that I revision it. That's powerful just to have that done. We have recognize that the activities in our lives can either align us with principle and get us the results we want or separate us from them. So some of the activities in our life that we um, that reflect how we use it and make this alignment stronger and easier are when we recognize our connection with all life and our participation over the last 30 years in the annual peace meditation. Cordes Foundation realized the power of race mind and created this vehicle to see the oneness of humanity. So we use that vehicle, maybe selfishly, as we participate every year, we use that to, to remind ourselves of that connection. And knowing that sometimes we allow life to overwhelm us, we took a look at what we could do about that. We, we were becoming all consumed with just work and thinking that that's all there was to life. And we weren't bringing really a whole lot of joy into our life if we weren't engaged in teaching or other positive activities at the center. So that's why we took the annual meditation and brought it to, uh, down locally to a monthly one. And then we added games playing it because we figured if we're not playing enough, if we're not laughing enough, we're not having fun, Maybe there's other people that would like to do that. So we come together and play, play games. And trust me, we laugh a lot. We miss Cheryl because she would sing to us some of the Catholic songs she learned that were, maybe she wouldn't sing them in church, but they, <laughs> but they were a lot of fun. Maybe you can get her to sing one one Sunday. We use the weekly prayer circle, as we have for over 20 years, as another way to connect with um, like-minded ones and to remain aligned, aligned in principle. And it gives us just a powerful opportunity to see all of you guys as the whole perfect and complete beings that you are. You are each one a magnificent expression of spirit. Do you know that? Do you know that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Say it like you mean it, okay? Yes. Our service here at the center on Sundays, same thing. It's a, it's, this place has such wonderful energy and marvelous people and a loving leader that we all come together in this positive energy where we see each other as the high holy beings that we are. We serve on the platform. Do the meditation. So I just invite you to take a look at your life and see where else you can participate at high levels, where you can remain in alignment with spirit, where you can stay in this wonderful energy. We have, we created, a number of years ago, we created a June event around Doug's birthday and around hearts because he loves playing hearts, and we had such wonderful memories of the summers that his sons came out 
from California and spent the summer with us, of all these late nights of us playing hearts and laughing and having a good time as a family and connecting with these two young men that we really didn't get to see a lot. So there were just fond memories and an opportunity to bring them out and get to know them as they've become adults. So every year we get to see them in this fun environment and they, trust me, they love to compete with their dad. <laughs> and he takes them swimming and they still try to beat him every time they go swim. So that's another way that we stay in alignment with spirit. And the people that come to play are wondrous ones. We just, it's just an environment where people can be who they are. People can come and have fun. People can share their food. People can laugh. They can watch. And then we created a second one a couple of years ago in October where we have a, an outside cookout that's, it's, it's an opportunity for us to invite more people because there's more space outside. So we have people from our swimming group, from our symphony group, from the center, from the other metaphysical communities, um, neighbors. We all can get together outside in this lovely setting and just connect with one another, strengthen our connections, deepen, and we can see each other as the high holy beings they are. It's a chance for us. I mean, it's pretty selfish if you think about it. We do it for us. We love it. And people are really grateful because not everyone has the opportunity to be outside at night, to eat at night, to eat with a lot of people, to have this huge array of food. And you know that when we talked before, we talked about tithing. Tithing has been an important part of our life, even when times were really tough. And many of you, I'm sure, have had the same experience of, if you're a tither, when money gets tough, you may think, well, you know what, I can't afford to give to the church. I'll just not give to the church because, you know, that really doesn't get me anything. But it's, it's been important to us since we got together to tithe. And I have to admit, sometimes it was a strain. But in tough times, we even took a look and we said, okay, we know God is our source. Maybe we're not giving God enough opportunity to express through us his money. So we'll up our tithing and just know God is our source and all is well. And it works. We've learned so many wonderful prosperity tools, being in the classes here, doing the workshops here, that it's really, prosperity is fun now. Fun now. Uh, we all have an opportunity here at the center to volunteer. I heard Larry has said several times, please volunteer, please, we need board members, we want board members. So I invite you to check in and see where it is that you're led to serve here. Greeters, I've been greeting at the uh, door in the last couple of weeks, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So usually by the end of Sunday, you can get a hug from everybody if you're a greeter. You can get hugs at the door and you can get hugs in here. So I encourage you to take it. Just do it. Just do it, like Nike says. And you're around a group of people that see how wonderful you are, that see the goodness, that see the God within. So everything we've heard this month, month sounds simple, right? Yeah, it is simple. It may not be so easy. But what you need to remember is there's a power in the universe that's greater than we are. That power is available to us to the extent that we allow it, to the extent that we believe in it, to the extent that we get out of the way. So we can use it. We can transform our lives in the blink of an eye and be a catalyst for other people as well. Uh, and of course, uh, we've mentioned a number of tools. Um, Besides classwork, there's meditation, affirmations, tithing, service, 12-step, Course in Miracles, ministerial counseling, practitioner sessions, just acknowledging the good in your life, sitting in gratitude when you go to bed and when you get up in the morning. Take a moment to write down, I'm glad I woke up. I'm glad I can turn the light on. So 
even if you don't think you have anything to be grateful for, start with the little things. And life is what happens to us, is not what happens to us. It is how we respond to it, to what happens that makes the difference. So this teaching allowed Doug and I to stay calm and positive through several storms in our lives, and we're grateful for it. So in closing, I'll ask you again, how much good are you allowing in? Are you having a good time? Yes. Yeah. Are you giving God a good time? <laughs> it is hard to describe, and I hope I've given a little bit of how powerful it is. It's hard to describe really how powerful it is being a part of this spiritual community with a leader that adores you absolutely and wants you to be the best you can be. That's all. That's all she wants. She wants, to be, she wants to be able to adore you and allow you to be the best you can be. And you're part of a community that sees you as your higher self. They don't know your story. They don't know you may only have a dollar in your pocket. They just know that you're a magnificent expression of God. So let them know that. The truth is... You are a repository of many powerful and divine gifts that may have been hidden or camouflaged by erroneous and unfortunate beliefs. It's time to call them forward. The beauty of religious science in this center as well is that it gives you the opportunity and the place and the space to unleash that giant within, to truly make a difference in your life, to reframe your life the way you want it, and to be uh, a blessing in the lives of your family and your friends and your community. So, it's simple. Change your thinking, change your life. Allow spirit to work. You are in the right place.